Hello. This video is going to be about linear quadratic control. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about linear quadratic control, so what I am going to do to make this different is I'm going to apply it to a different type of application. This application is a, uh, uh, a temperature control and level control, and what we're trying to do is control both. There's a hot water pump and a cold water pump, and the goal is to try to maintain a level and a temperature as demand on the, uh, uh, the water coming out of the, the mixing tank changes. The goal uh, is to keep the tank full at about one meter level, and I'm assuming it's got a surface area of one meter, so that's one cubic meter. Uh, the temperature is supposed to be at uh, 40 degrees centigrade, so uh, to start with, what I'm going to do is, uh, while we have the, the feed water here, we've got the uh, cold water, which it, this is supposed to be a uh, problem that was presented to me by an engineer from Mauritius, which is an island east of Africa. I'm sure it's pretty warm there, so this is the cold water, about room temperature, and this is the hot water, which I was told is solar heated. And uh, one of the problems that I saw in this application right off the bat was, uh, well, there's two. Uh, if you don't have water moving out of the tank, there, in other words, if there's no demand, you really can't change the temperature because if you're not adding either hot water or cold water. And then what's going to happen is that um, the temperature in the tank, which is you know supposed to be at 40 degrees, is going to um, decay down to uh, basically ambient temperature which is 20 degrees so you know right away i saw that there was going to be a problem so it really needed to have a research pump that would allow the um, water to be mixed a little bit more so you could maintain a constant 40 degrees but for the purpose of this um, application uh, we're not going to worry about that too much, except for I am going to take into account the fact that the water is going to cool off. So I assumed a time constant in minutes. Uh, the engineer gave us uh, flows for his pump, which uh, was in uh, liters per second, and I converted it to a minute so that I could have consistent uh, units of minutes. I assumed the area of the tank was uh, one meter. He didn't know for sure, so I just pick this out to uh, show how to um, do this example. And I assume that we want to keep the level at one meter. Um, this was what I used to, when I was first setting up the problem, trying to assume a uh, constant demand. But later on in this example, what I did is I made it so the demand is variable. So the key here is to write the differential equations. And again, I can't stress how important it is to write differential equations. So I have the uh, temperature in the top here and the level in the bottom. And this, these two terms, um, and I could have probably combined them, basically what it does is it takes into account the fact that uh, the temperature is going to decay. Um, you see here if it's hot, it's going to decay because it's got the negative here. Then, but it won't decay to less than the uh, ambient temperature. Then this is uh, how the temperature or the level is going to change based on demand. And then this is kind of the, the tricky part. There's uh, well, here you can see you got the the pump flow for uh, the hot and the cold, and these are the the coefficients from up here. So as you change the uh, uh, hot and the cold um, flow, and this goes from zero to one, zero to one, so that will give me uh, zero to uh, 2.52 meters, or cubic meters per uh, uh, minute. And then if I divide that by the area, then I'll have my change in level. So the, the sum of these two will uh, affect my change in level, but this is the interesting part here, and this is what makes it nonlinear. Basically, what's going to happen is the uh, area times the level is the volume. And the reason why I have the level in the uh, denominator is because as the tank level shrinks, 
what's going to happen is that the uh, constant amount of water is going to have more, more effect as the level is smaller than when the level is much higher. So that's what this equation does. And it's just basically uh, summing the two flows and uh, assuming that the, um, you know, the temperature is going to be an average or whatever percentage of the flows uh, that are supplied by the hot and, and cold water. Now, the problem is uh, we've got to make this linear. So this is um, the nonlinear uh, system. And uh, again, this is the, uh, how the temperature is going to decay as a function of time. And then this is how the, uh, the mixing is going to happen from the two pumps. And then this makes sure that the temperature doesn't decay to less than uh, ambient. And then this is the demand formula. So I'm just breaking this explanation or this equation down into the four different parts. So now we need to do the uh, linear quadratic control. And uh, what we need to do is get rid of this, um, this process variable. In other words, this is the level. And we've got to linearize it. So I'm going to assume that the level is going to stay close to the uh, set point, which is at one meter. So I put substitute this and this for uh, the, the actual levels for the set point. And uh, there's no need to do any substitutions for the temperature. So we have the temperature set point, the level set point. Now I'm going to do the calculations to calculate out the, uh, this is the continuous time domain or time de uh, arrays. This is the transition matrix. This is the input coupling matrix. Calculate out the uh, digital versions, discrete versions. And then this is my cost function. And uh, now what I need to do is choose a Q and a R. Well, this is one of the things that people always have questions about is how do you choose the Q and the R? And for the most part, if you want to, um, this is for temperature and this is for flow. And if I want to weight the temperature highly, then I need to make this Q array bigger than the, uh, the flow array. And then also I need to weight whether, you know, the difference between level error and the um, uh, temperature error. And because this is the, uh, the temperature up here and this is the level, uh, I've got this weighted so that one degree in temperature error is the same as 0.1 uh, meters of level. And the way that you calculate this out is you have to take the ratio of those two uh, values, which is um, 0 over 1, and then uh, square it. So then what happens is that I have a 1 and a 0 0.01 up here. So that makes it so that the, um, the temperature, one degree of temperature is going to be equal to one-tenth of a uh, meter of level. Now, it's going to try to hold that, but it won't hold it exactly because of the uh, different things that are the interactions. Now, this is the linear quadratic uh, equation, or um, actually it's Riccati's equation that's for solving the, uh, for gain and this p-value. And I can just run this out for many different iterations. What happens is that you actually end up calculating this out backwards. So if I start out with a 1, you can see that the gains are very, very small. And then as I go back in time, 2, see they get a little bit bigger, 3, bigger yet. And if I make this big enough, it's going to be almost like it's, uh, uh, it's not really changing now. So I really didn't need to do 3,600 iterations. So this is my gain array. And uh, you can see that, well, here I'll show down here. So now I have my set point and my level and my output for the hot uh, pump and the cold pump is calculated like this. So I have the uh, uh, temperature set point, and this is the actual uh, temperature, and it gets multiplied by uh, this parameter and this parameter, and then uh, um, 
the error in the level gets multiplied by this and this. And I'm just simplifying the equation here, making a function. And the reason why I'm doing this is I still want to limit my output from 0 to 1. Remember, 1 is 100% or the full pump output. So now I'm going to do the simulation. Uh, I've got my, my time in uh, minutes. And then so I'm simulating every second. I'm going to simulate uh, for, what is it, 60 minutes. And then this is my demand in cubic meters per minute. Now remember, we're trying to get water out of this mixing tank at, uh, well, here 0.4 meters per, per minute and here 0.6. And if you remember from above, the maximum flow is about 0.5 meters per second. So we, we know at this point, the water level in the tank is going to start going down. So I have my initial state and my differential equation. So this is the, uh, the equation for the temperature. And then this part down here is the equation for the um, level. I'm going to use Rungakata to do the simulation. And I have my, uh, uh, well, this is going to just calculate the cost afterwards. This isn't really necessary. I was just curious. So down here, I have the results of the uh, Rungakata. So this is time in minutes, uh, the temperature for the tank, and the level of the tank in meters. So come on down here and now we have the simulation results. So like I said, we're trying to control both temperature and level and this isn't really possible. You can control one or the other perfectly, but not both at the same time. So what we're trying to do is find a cost um, algorithm that's going to minimize the undesirability of having the temperature be too low or the, the level go too level too low. So here you can see the temperature. Take a dive. It only goes down to about 39.2. You can see the level goes down to about 0.7 meters. And uh, we can see the control output. The uh, control output uh, for hot and cold. And you can see that it's using much more cold than hot. And some of that's because we're trying to uh, hold the level at 40 degrees C and the temperature for the hot water is 65 degrees. So it takes um, less hot water anyway. And then uh, this is the output. Here the output is going, the demand goes up to uh, 0.6 and you can see that the, uh, um, the the ratio of the hot to the cold but we can see that the, the hot water supply and the cold water supply during different steps but at no time do we really get too far out from the uh, set point so if I wanted to make it so that it holds closer to the uh, 40 degrees and not uh, have the temperature drop significantly, what I can do, let's go back up here to the, uh, the array, oops, too far, if I increase this weighting to 100, See, at this point, Q is going to be equal to that. Now what's going to happen is it's going to weight the temperature control much more strongly than the uh, flow. And uh, also, the oh, notice here I only weight the uh, using the hot water. Uh, I'm assuming that the uh, ambient temperature water or cold water is uh, supply is infinite. So I didn't worry too much about that. Let's take a look at the uh, results now. So here you can see that uh, because we weighted the temperature array much higher, 
you can see that it's uh, staying much more close to uh, 40 degrees C and at some points it goes over but on the you know it probably averages about 40 degrees C and then also notice that the uh, level doesn't drop quite so much. You can also see that we're outputting um, almost um, 100% here, well actually 100% for both uh, pumps. Remember I, I told you at, at this point the uh, demand is 0.6 meters per minute and we only have a peak demand capability of 0.5 and that's the reason why they need to have the uh, limits on the uh, control output so that the pump uh, output wouldn't go any uh, higher than one. So here you can see the demand and this is truncated off. Oops, stop. This is truncated here because we just don't have any more flow. The pumps are running as uh, high as they can. But still, you can see that it controls the, uh, the level uh, quite nicely. It's um, also desirable to keep the level up as close to one meter as possible because like I said, as the uh, level goes down, a little change in flow is going to change the temperature. Um, and well, at, at half a meter, it's going to have twice the effect on temperature as it would at one meter because you have more um, fluid to try to uh, either heat up or cool down. Anyway, um, that's my example and hopefully you can find this uh, useful. Bye.